And it's not breakfast, and it's not lunch, it's brunch. And that's what I'm going to prepare for my guest today, my bountiful brunch buffet. Jazzy, you're going to be healthy with the Jazzy Vegetarian. Jazzy's so snazzy, we're going to cook something healthy and light. Should it do you, do you, do you, should it do you, do you, do you. Jazzy's so snazzy. So join me in the kitchen right now. We're going to cook something healthy and light. That's right. Join me as I prepare a bountiful brunch. We're going to begin with my easy-to-make mini biscuits, which I'll serve alongside my surprisingly authentic-tasting no-egg scramble, and then crispy cashew French toast served with warmed organic maple syrup is next up on the menu. My simple side dishes include tomato basil pinwheel and fancy fruit salad. So let's prepare it now. I'm going to start off with my mini biscuits. It's all going to be from the same batter. You can use this batter to make so many different kinds of fabulous biscuits to serve at breakfast, lunch, brunch, or dinner anytime. So here's how it goes. For those of you who don't know what sage looks like, this is really easy to grow out on your back deck or your garden or if you have a little window planter, it just needs some nice hot sun and a little bit of water and it doesn't need a lot of attention. It smells so good. Sage is a very, very strong herb. I'm only going to use two leaves. Put them on top of one another, just rolling them up. See how that's rolled up? That's going to make it real easy to chop. And then just chop right across it. You do want to chop this sage very, very small. And you're going to end up with just a little smattering of this sage. But a tiny bit of sage goes a long way. But it really makes for a fabulous two herb savory biscuit. Now the fresh sage that I've used in my mini biscuits today came from my garden. I have two kinds of sage. One is the purple sage, and then I have what I call my regular sage. I've started off with a pot. I've filled this up with a good quality potting soil. Okie dokie. So I'm gonna start with my purple sage and just kind of easily loosen it up Push it a little bit so that you don't break the root system as you pull it out. Now that came out perfectly out of the pot. And I like to just ruffle up that root system just a little bit, pull the roots out a bit, because when I put them into my pot, it's going to help them to grab hold. And I'm going to make a hole in my soil that's about the same size as the root system. Just tuck it right in there. Yes, that's perfect. See how it's the same level as the rest of my soil and then fill it around. And that is really all you have to do. Let's put in my regular sage. I'm gonna make a hole. That's perfect. Mm, this smells so amazing. I do wish you could smell it. That sage, woo, super, super duper. Now with sage, you do want a lot of sunlight, but it does like to be kind of dry. So if you're someone who goes away on the weekends a lot or travels, sage is a good one to grow. Isn't that pretty? And we'll get back to cooking. Then for the basil, I'm going to use five leaves of fresh basil that I also had growing out on my deck today. Now, how do you make mini biscuits, you may ask. That's what I'm here to do right now. Here's the basic recipe. This makes 24 mini biscuits. Now, I served these a couple of weeks ago, and my friend Tommy said, everybody should have these mini biscuits. They're so fabulous, and they really are. They're kind of like you would get in a gourmet restaurant. I'm so excited about them. So I used one cup of whole wheat organic flour and one cup of whole wheat pastry flour. This makes them just a little bit lighter with the two different flours. And then I'm using one tablespoon of baking powder put that in there. We're putting our dry ingredients in. And then I'm going to use just a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. And then my secret ingredient is two tablespoons of toasted wheat germ. That all just goes right in there. Quick and easy. Those are my dry ingredients. We're going to whisk them together. No need to sift them together. That's it. Simple as biscuits. 
And so we're also going to add in two teaspoons of organic brown sugar. And it's just a tiny, tiny bit of sweetness. There we go. Now we're going to add the wet ingredients in. Vegan mayonnaise is really easy to get at your marketplace or your local health food store these days. So what I have here is a third cup of my vegan mayo. That's my first wet ingredient. And then one and a quarter cups of soy milk. Toss it about. It's going to be a very lumpy batter. Don't overmix. Now I'm going to divide this into threes because I'm going to make my blueberry, my plain and fancy, and my herbed. It doesn't have to be exact, that's for sure. So just divide it into three if you want to do what I'm doing, because then you'll end up with a beautiful array of three different kinds of biscuits, which you're going to see how I'm going to serve them up. It's just fantastic. Now I have greased out my 24 tins, and here's how I load them up. I just take a heaping teaspoon of my batter, and that's it. Put a heaping teaspoon in each little cup. And you're going to feel how light as a feather this batter is. Okay, now there's my plain and fancy. And the next thing we're going to do is do our blueberry mini biscuits. I've got about a half a cup of fresh blueberries. I'm going to pair that with one quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Just kind of fold those blueberries in. Don't overmix it. I'm going to make these a little bigger because they've got those blueberries in them and we want plenty of room for those blueberries to stay inside of these fantastic mini biscuits. There's our first plate ready to go. And now we're going to start our second. Now, meanwhile, I've preheated my oven to 400, and they are going to go in the oven for about 18 to 22 minutes. Watch them, make sure they don't overbrown, but they are nice to have a little bit of that crispy crunch right on top. All right, there's our blueberry version. Now we've got our last bit of dough here, which we're going to add our fresh sage and our fresh chopped basil. Mix it around once like that. The savory two herb biscuits go particularly well at a dinner party. And the flavor of these savory herbs complements beautifully. That's it. Beautiful. And now we're going to get started with the main dish of our brunch, my no egg scramble. You've got to see what I've got in store for you here. And I actually made this for my husband a while back. And he said, gee, I didn't know we were eating eggs and we weren't. That's how much like eggs this dish looks and tastes. And we're going to start off by putting a little bit of olive oil into our large skillet. About a tablespoon or so. And we're going to add one medium onion I have chopped. It's going to all cook down. That's how we're going to start that. And we're going to saute this onion for a while until it starts becoming translucent. So what I like to do at this point is put the top back on the pan. Meanwhile, I have just finished chopping about five ounces of baby Bella mushrooms. You see, I've just done them in a real rough chop. And then I've also rough chopped a half of a red pepper. You can use green, yellow, orange. So I'm gonna take my chopping board out of the way since I'm all done with that and continue to stir my onions. Oh, these are already smelling just fabulous. Now we're going to add our five ounces of Baby Bella mushrooms. That translates into eight to 10 medium Baby Bella mushrooms. Toss it around a little bit. All right, we're gonna put our top back on. I'm starting to smell my onions and my mushrooms really come together here. At this point, I'm gonna add some reduced sodium tamari. About, oh, I guess about a teaspoon of that tamari. And that's also going to help to caramelize the onions and the mushrooms a little bit. Look how gorgeous that's starting to look. Beautiful. I'm gonna let those saute for another five minutes or so while I prep our tofu. I suggest that you buy non-GMO organic tofu. I like to take a large bowl, place my tofu in the middle, 
my trusty potato masher, which I have in my kitchen, right in a place of honor so I can grab it at any time. I'm gonna start mashing the tofu. And for this dish, I do recommend using firm tofu. And see there, I've got it scrambled just till it looks kind of like the consistency of scrambled eggs, but it's not the color yet. But that's what we're going to do. As soon as I check on my onions, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There we are, we're ready to go there. And now I'm gonna add my red peppers, mix them in. Just let that cook down a little bit while we're continuing to prepare our tofu. So I think you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, what the heck is she gonna do to make this anything like scrambled eggs? Well, here is my fabulous trick. I use a half teaspoon of turmeric. It tastes good too. And so I'm gonna put in that half teaspoon of turmeric. Now we may add a little more later. We're gonna see kind of how it looks. And then add a tiny bit of reduced sodium tamari. And then what gives it an extra little tiny kick is about a 16th of a teaspoon of a little cayenne pepper. Now we're gonna mash it all around. That's all you have to do. All comes together. Look how beautiful that is. All right. And add a little touch of salt too. That gives it a little pop. Now we're gonna toss our tofu right in there. Now this is when it really starts looking like scrambled eggs. Look at that. Now if I said to you right now, I'm making scrambled eggs, if you just came and turned on the television, you'd say, oh, she's making scrambled eggs with mushrooms and peppers and onions. Yes. All right, the little last touch, fresh ground black pepper. I'm gonna put the top on for about a minute or so. And then I'm gonna get ready to prepare my meatless bacon. And you're gonna put a tiny bit of olive oil in here. And this meatless bacon, which you can get at a lot of supermarkets now, and you can also get it at your health food store. It comes packaged, it almost looks like bacon the way that they package it. And you're gonna cook it just like you would bacon. I do like to use these substitutes when I can. So we're gonna put this on the back burner, cover it, and let it cook over low heat for about five minutes on each side while we're finishing up our tofu scramble. Now let me check it. Oh, yep, that's looking perfect. Now this next step, take a half a cup of vegan cheese and sprinkle it over the top. This makes it just extra yummy. There we go. Oh yeah, that's good. Just toss it just a little bit. We're going to let it cook for one more minute. And then what we're going to do, which makes it really convenient to serve for guests is I'm going to cover it very tightly. I'm going to set this aside. So right now we're gonna do my easy, simple, three minute tomato basil pinwheel. So let me put that together for you right now. Now what is brunch without some kind of a salad? We're going to be serving some tomatoes. So these are actually local Jersey tomatoes that I'm gonna be using. You see I'm slicing them very, very thinly for my beautiful pinwheel. Aren't they gorgeous? I'm gonna start with these two. I'm gonna set my tomatoes aside and I've just picked a few nice sprigs of my fresh basil, about 15 leaves of basil I'm going to use today. I'm gonna to set these little pieces aside to use later on. And this is how you put your whole pinwheel together. Start with one slice of your beautiful tomato and then just place a pretty little basil leaf there. Another slice of tomato, you're gonna overlap it like a pinwheel would be. Another pretty piece of your basil. I like to make this about an hour or so before I serve it. Now we're gonna go around the inside and continue with our spiral, placing a bit of the basil in between each piece of this beautiful tomato. Put one tomato in the middle with a little basil leaf on the top. Look how pretty this is. And it was just so easy to do. Now, this is how I finish it off. Take a little bit of sea salt, sprinkle it over the top. Oh, maybe about a quarter of a teaspoon. That's all you're going to use. Then we're gonna drizzle over the top. 
this gorgeous extra virgin olive oil. All right, I'm going to set this aside to marinate. And now we're going to make my delicious, crispy cashew French toast. Let me show you how this comes together. Now, for years, I've been trying to figure out how to make a French toast without eggs. So one day, I woke up and I really wanted French toast. And all of a sudden, it came to me, cashews. Cashews have fat like eggs. Cashews, when you whip them up with uh, a little bit of water and vanilla and cinnamon, like I'm going to do now, really kind of resemble the consistency of egg whites. So I thought, hmm, the fat in the cashews might help the bread to brown and the taste of the cashews is going to be oh so yummy in that cashew French toast. I thought, oh, what the heck, let me give it a try. Bingo. It's absolutely fabulous. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Today, I have one cup of raw cashews and I'm pouring it directly into my blender. I'm going to add one quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. That makes it real French toasty tasting. And my friend Lily always put vanilla in her French toast. That was her special, special secret. So I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla and then a little bit of water. Now we're going to add the water a little bit at a time. So we're going to start with about a half a cup of water. Here we go. Stop it after you've blended it just a little while and you're going to scrape down the sides. Touch more water. Altogether today I'm going to use a cup of water. You're just going to let this blend till it all becomes very smooth and creamy in texture. All righty, that is beautiful. I like to have a nice big plate so that I have a lot of area to dip my bread slices into. You do want to let this cashew cream kind of get infused into your bread. So we're going to dip them both sides, you're going to see, and then we're going to place them in our refrigerator for about an hour and let it soak in. I'm going to show you how we're going to put this together now. Here's my bread. I like to use a sprouted bread. You're going to dip it in just like you would regular French toast. Right in the middle like that. Flip it over and kind of gloop it down. See, I'm putting the fork holes in the bread. That's so the delicious cashew kind of gets infused all the way through it. I like to put it on a cookie sheet. This recipe makes five or six slices. That is it. I'm going to put together my beautiful, fancy fruit salad for my brunch gathering today. And you're going to see what I do to really dress it up. So let's put that together now. Now, sometimes it's all about the presentation. And this fancy fruit salad is something that's just so easy, but it's just so beautiful looking. And what I've taken is uh, several cups of fresh cantaloupe and fresh watermelon. That's what we're going to start with. And since I had bought the blueberries to make my blueberry mini biscuits, I had another half pint of the blueberries left over, and they're going to be beautiful. But it's what you serve it in that sometimes is the fabulous extra pop that makes it real entertaining. And another great tip, if you're looking to be eco-friendly and to save money, you don't want to always buy flowers when you're entertaining or whenever you're having a very nice meal. So this makes a beautiful centerpiece. You don't have to spend any extra money and you're not wasting anything. That's a great tip. So I take it, just going to pour it right into the bowl and we kind of want to just make it all go to the tippy tippy top. Now you want to keep this very well chilled until you serve it. I had some basil today that was just starting to flower. So you can just garnish it with a little basil, just so you have a little pop of green coming out. And that was it. A couple of minutes to our beautiful fancy fruit salad. And I think that my crispy French toast has already marinated enough. So now we are going to make it crispy and saute it up in the pan. Let's get it now. 
I've heated a pan on medium heat and put in about a teaspoon or two of olive oil. Let that heat up. So you've got a nice hot pan. And then you're going to set that in there. Listen to that sizzle. That's what you want to hear with this. And you can put in usually two pieces at once in a pan like this. And we're going to cover it, let it cook for a few minutes on each side. Just be sure to check it often so you make sure that it's not browning too much. Look at that. Nice and crispy. It's looking like regular French toast now. I'm going to turn it, flip it over. Look how beautiful that is. Look at the color. Looks just like regular French toast once you cook it up. So I'm going to let it cook on this side. There we go. In about two minutes or so on this side, and then I'm gonna put the next in, and then I'm gonna plate everything up for you. Well, doesn't this look fantastic? If I do say so myself, this is certainly a bountiful brunch if I have ever seen one. First, I'm gonna grab myself a piece of this gorgeous, gorgeous French toast, and then a scoop of our beautiful no egg scramble. Isn't that pretty? And then I've had this wonderful Jersey tomatoes marinating in this olive oil for about an hour or so. My beautiful mini biscuits. Then last but not least, just a scoop of my beautiful fruit salad right there. And of course I've got my warmed organic maple syrup, which I'm going to liberally Put all, my mouth is watering, I've got to say. Put all over the top of this. So I've got to taste a piece of this crispy. Get a little bit of that delicious organic maple syrup. Mmm, 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 mmm. But now I want to try a little bit of these no egg scramble. Mmm, wow. And then my beautiful blueberry mini biscuits. So let's just break one of those open for you. Of course, I've got to take. Mm -mm -mm. I want to thank you so very much for joining me today for my bountiful, jazzy, vegetarian-style brunch. I hope that the next time you're going to make a fabulous midday meal, you'll think about these great recipes that we made here on the show today. So until next time, be happy and be healthy and be well. I'm the Jazzy Vegetarian. Visit our website at jazzyvegetarian.com to connect with Laura, see videos, find your favorite recipes, and more. Follow Laura on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Jazzy Vegetarian, lively vegan cuisine that's easy and delicious, includes all the recipes from this season and is available for $26.95. This 10th anniversary edition companion cookbook features full-color photos, menu plans, and over 120 recipes. For information or to order, visit jazzyvegetarian.com. Next time on Jazzy Vegetarian, I'll highlight Southwestern-style recipes. Velvety five-ingredient guacamole whips up in a flash. And Jazzy black bean chili pairs with hearty double corn cornbread. And the kids will love nutritious nachos. Join me. Saturday.